For patients who relapse after CAR-T therapy, um, we often want to try and think about a clinical trial. That's these patients are, are high risk. They've got obviously very refractory disease. So I'm always very keen to look at what clinical trial options we have available. We do have other licensed therapies. Um, we have currently have uh, licensed rituximab, bendamustine, polituzumab for auto-ineligible patients, second line and beyond. There is a license, and it's going through NICE at the minute, about tafacitumab lenalidomide. And tafacitumab is an anti-CD19 naked antibody, which is used in combination with lenalidomide. Um, and the TAFA is continued until progression. So this um, can be used in, in countries where there is reimbursement, and I'm waiting to hear from NICE as to whether this could be an option for our patients. And then other licensed therapies, again, not reimbursed in the UK, but gonna go through NICE is Longcastuximab, which currently has a licensed third line and beyond. So we do have um, other options available for these patients who are considered to be not auto eligible, but we do need to think about clinical trials. And the clinical trials that um, I'm quite excited about is the bispecific antibodies. And we have um, many bispecific antibody in a clinical trial um, at present, and none of them as yet have license, but this may be an option for patients. And certainly CAR-T patients aren't excluded uh, for many of these trials. So understanding sequencing of these therapies is gonna be really important because when we have more therapies to choose from, we know that the impact of one therapy may impact the efficacy of the subsequent one. So I think it's gonna be really important that we collect real world data so that we can really understand the sequencing, uh, the optimal sequencing so that we really carefully choose uh, the sequence for our patients.